Bitte begrüßen Sie mit mir Toni Amendola. Welcome to FedCon's press conference. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, in Germany. Meine Damen und Herren, Sie haben jetzt ja, bis gut 12 Uhr Zeit, unseren Stargästen Fragen zu stellen. Bitte melden Sie sich bei mir mit Handzeichen und ich bringe Ihnen das Mikrofon. Please give me a hand sign and I will bring you the microphone. Keiner traut sich. Hello everyone, great that you are here. And my question is maybe of course for Richard Dean Anderson. Um, hi Rick. Yeah? Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you again. You are, we have learned that uh, unfortunately uh, Stargate, Stargate Universe has come to an end. So what do you mean? Is there a future at least for the third uh, Stargate DVD movie in which you were supposed to be play the lead role? <laughs> I have no one to look to in, in this uh, particular conference. I have no idea what you're talking about. No. <laughs> I need... Uh, it's Scott Bakula's fault. Okay. Uh, I, I, I actually have no uh, information relative... Stereo. <laughs> I, I have no um, information about Stargate's uh, future at all. All I know probably is... I probably know less than you do. But I know that the uh, universe has been canceled, and um, uh, why is up to, I guess, think you guys, because I, it's a very heady um, project, and I don't think, I don't think it found a sustained audience to keep going. It's a little, I don't know, too much going on in the head, whereas we were just a bunch of dumb actors, you know. <laughs> Well, most of us are dumb. But um, I quite honestly, I'll, I'll learn more probably this weekend than, um, uh, than I should. But uh, please, keep me posted what's going on so I know what the future holds. Is that good? Eine bitte noch. Bitte nicht jede Frage an Richard in Anderson. Okay? Hi, I'm Harvest from RTL Television. Uh, my question is for Will Wheaton. So what, what do you think when you see the old episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation where we are so young, uh, so what do you think when you see this old uh, yeah, series? Because you're forever young in the series. This is awesome. like... And you were the youngest of all. Because <laughs> now you're a man, you know? That's what they tell me. 
Uh, you know, one of the one of the, the real joys of getting together with the cast of Next Generation now uh, is that we can relate to each other in ways that were not possible for me when I was a child. And uh, it's really fun for me to see my friends from the cast and find out that the way that I remember the show and I, the way that I remember the familial feeling that we all had was genuine. It wasn't just because I was a child and everyone was tolerant of me. Uh, Apparently they were tolerant of me, uh, uh, but it was uh, it was such a wonderful experience, and uh, to, to to get together with with members of the cast now and uh, look back on something and see sort of where our memories match up and uh, where things are, are are widely different is a, really a, a lot of fun for me. What is your personal um, best uh, Star Trek moment behind the scenes? Do you remember some special things that happened behind the scenes? I had a lot of fun working with Robbie McNeil when we did the first duty because it was the first time in all of the years that I worked on Star Trek that I was with a group of actors that were my age and we all liked the same music and uh, we all had the same cultural influences and I didn't feel like I was trying really hard to just sort of keep up with the grown-ups. Um, and anytime I had an opportunity to work with Patrick Stewart, I felt like I, uh, uh, like I was gaining levels as an actor. Um, uh, he was such a, a tremendous actor and such a, a, a generous, giving actor uh, to deal with a kid. Uh, he made me a better actor just uh, by getting to have scenes with him. And something nice about Marina because she's sitting right here. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Pia Schrell from Sat1 Television. My question is for Richard Dean Anderson. So, here are a lot of people who really enjoy wearing costumes. What about you? Do you like to wear costumes in your private life? <laughs> Truly, I do. <laughs> I had gone in with a lot of the uh, material from the show. I took it home. And... Actually, you know, I, 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 before I even started on uh, that particular show, I wore um, cargo pants and boots and t-shirts. <laughs> so they copied me, I'm sorry. Um, well, don't we all kind of like to dress up a little bit, or is it just me? It's just me? Okay, good. And I feel unique. Or, or eunuch. Thanks. Yeah. It's the makeup that I've done without. Wer möchte die nächste Frage stellen? Hello, my name is Susanne Schwager from StargatePlanet.de and I have a question for Kate Hewlett. So, um, I saw on the internet that you were involved in um, Jesus, Harry Christ, which is now in post-production. And what can you tell us about your involvement in this movie without, of course, giving not too much away? Or giving much away. I just got off an airplane, <laughs> so I'm gonna just fall face down on the table in a second. Um, hi, everybody. I've never met Richard Dean Anderson before. Hi. Um, he's nice. He's nice, yeah. Right here. Everyone can hear me, can't they? Um, I, uh, yes, I worked on Jesus Henry Christ uh, with Michael Sheen, who was a fantastic actor, fantastic person to work with, and I play his very pregnant wife, who he believes uh, it, it, he believes it's not his child. That's all I'm going to say. And it's a comedy. Uh, yeah. It's, it's going to be good, I think. Michael Sheen is a fantastic actor, and uh, Tony Collette was in it as well, who I met in the makeup trailer. That was the extent of our connection. Um, and who else? Lots of good people. So, yeah. Thank you. May I add another question? Oh, sure. Any chance you any chance you are going to do another movie with your brother? We're not on speaking terms anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we're we're looking at doing a TV show together. Actually, uh, we're both writing now, and he's directing. So we're definitely that's definitely uh, going to happen. Hopefully, in the next year, and maybe a movie too. But uh, for the time being, TV is more lucrative. Is there a working title for the TV show? Uh, well, we're still working on Starcrossed. Okay. Uh, and then there are a couple of other ones which are untitled. Okay. Yeah. Sounds promising. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> 
Und die nächste Frage hier. Uh, hi, my name is Zach. I'm uh, from trackradio.net. Uh, my question is for Nicole. Um, a lot of people, uh, when Deep Space Nine ended, thought it could have gone on for, uh, well, several more seasons. Uh, and many people were hopeful for, uh, for a TV movie or something to, to continue the universe. Of course, that never happened. But uh, how, how do you feel about the way DS9 ended? And do you think it could have uh, gone on further? That'll help. That'll help. Um, I was uh, just happy to be on it. I knew it was the last season going into it, so that was enough for me. Obviously, there could have been a lot more that uh, that Esri could have done, like become, you know, a captain. Um, that was my goal, and it never happened. I, I shot it all in my head, though, and um, it was great. I did become captain one day. I wish you all saw it. And um, that's it. There were, we, I did actually think we were going to do a TV movie at one point. And I told everyone that that was going to happen. And it was really embarrassing for me when it didn't happen. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you did eventually become a captain in the novels, I believe. So congratulations. Uh, yeah, I heard that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just on behalf of all our listeners, I want to say to all of the guests here, um, we, we may be a Star Trek radio station, but the, our listeners are fans of all of you. Uh, we have listeners in 105 countries around the world, uh, and they just all think you're fantastic. We, uh, we've got uh, tons and tons of emails come in uh, asking us to, to convey that uh, as we came here. So I just wanted to say that to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. What the next question? Where goes it? Please take it. I have a question for, for Paul McGillian. Uh, would you please tell me what uh, you are just doing right now? Any, any connection? I'm uh, staring at you, you're so handsome. Uh, <laughs> Paul, please. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we got off the plane a little while ago. I'm hanging out with uh, Nicole DeBoer and everyone here. It's so great to be back in FedCon. I was here four years ago. It's the 20th anniversary, right? Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Come on, gentlemen, let's hear <laughs> I know you very uh, being good uh, in uh, Vancouver primarily. I got married a little while, a little while ago, so that's nice. Because you know it's been a long time. It's been a long time here. Yeah. Not to him, but lovely wife. But uh, no, things have been good. It's been very busy. As Stargate's come to a close, unfortunately, but uh, the possibility of movies still is out there. I think at some point in time, and uh, really happy. I saw David Hewlett uh, two weeks ago with Joe Flanagan in Vancouver. It was nice to see those guys. It was great, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been uh, it's been a busy time. With, like, lots of different uh, films. Worked on a JJ Abrams pilot called Alcatraz a little while ago, and I think called Captain Starship that we're doing with uh, Ivan Bartok, who's a good friend of RDA's. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, things have been very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Uh, Kevin Katz from handicap-dortmund.de. I have a question for Mr. Richard Anderson. Um, <coughs> the, oh, no. oh, oh, no. I, I do my best. I'm a bit nervous. <coughs> so, your interest in social commitment, did it happen through the job, through your work on MacGyver, or did it, uh, was, it was it triggered earlier? What do you mean by social commitment? Uh, things like uh, working for Sea Shepherd, uh, Scoliosis Society, and uh, of course the Challengers Club for Boys and Girls. Um, yeah, I think it was just born out of opportunity more than anything. I mean, the jobs that I've had uh, since I left home, um, or at least in the, the, the theatrical sense, of the, the jobs I've had on television, let's say, have uh, brought the opportunities and the requests and the invitations to to uh, be involved in various charities and um, causes and it got to the point where I was saying yes to everything for for a long time because everything seemed to be worthy of time and effort money and attention promotion and uh, then I just started to became became a where I could have basically I had to kind of pare it down and pick and choose and be a little more uh, specific in my uh, my commitment. So, uh, Sea Shepherd has become the number one. I was on the board of the directors for quite 
a few years and I'm still an advisor. Um, the Riverkeeper um, Alliance and uh, several other ones in uh, the Los Angeles area. But um, it's just, there was the opportunity was there. I mean, if people invite you and you have a notion to, uh, I mean, it's going to sound too uh, braggadocious, but it's just like, if you've got the opportunity, why not help? You know, like, why not take it? Because, uh, I don't know, it's there. It's, so, it's really fun to help out. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Let me rethink that answer and get back to you. <laughs> Hello, it's Pavis again from RTL. My question is for Kate Gordon, because you are the only cast member of the new Battle Star Galactica series. After the series has ended, after four seasons, I got some rumors about a cinematic movie which will come out in 2012 from Battle Star Galactica. Do you know anything about it? Um, can you hear me? Um, as far as I know, well, no one from our show will be a part of any movie that is Battle Star Galactica. Apparently, um, From what I know, um, um, I think through Glenn Larson. You got the bad one. I got the bad one. Um, uh, that uh, he wants to do his own battle, Star Galactica, again. That has nothing to do with the Ron Moore um, version of Battle, Star Galactica. And I thought Brian Singer was going to be directing the new Battle, Star Galactica. But uh, it's a mouthful. <laughs> um, but he's just finished um, Jack the Giant Killer, and that's going to take a couple of years before that comes out. So I really don't know where where they're at with the new version of Battlestar Galactica. But did you know about uh, why he take this decision? Because never change a winning team. It would be perfect if I see the, the, the cast from the series of the new Battlestar Galactica in a movie, and not some other guys uh, playing Battlestar Galactica in a new one. Well, I agree. I, I personally agree with you on that one. I think it's a, a strange creative choice. Most of us on Battlestar Galactica think the same way, I feel the same way. But it's out of our hands and it's the business, so, you know, if they wanted to, you know... Glenn Larson owns the movie rights, is what it boils down to. Does it have to write some letters, some emails to get some toilet papers from the, from the top hey, of the Hey, if you, you want to start an online sort of, ah, you know, get the original cast members in there, go for it. We, I, you know, I think we'd all love to be a part of it. Believe me, I will do. Okay, I enlist you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. How you been, Tony? Well, good. <laughs> See you later, buddy. Hello. This is Starry Planet uh, again uh, with a question for Tony Amendola. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I would like uh, to ask if you could tell us uh, something about your current projects, um, Pizza with Bullets and the Son of an Afghan Farmer. Uh, where are you? <laughs> I'm here. Oh, there you are. Thanks. Uh, current projects. Um, Pizza with Bullets was just a, sort of a silly uh, project that, uh, you know, uh, called for a little bit of singing. I've never sung, so I thought anyone foolish enough to ask me to sing. Which uh, character did you play in the I, I played a character called Sammy the Voice. It's, um, uh, but it was fun. It was fun just to do that. Uh, I, you know, I hadn't been to Vancouver for about three years since uh, doing Stargate, and this in March and April, I was there twice, and that was probably the most fun. Uh, once on a pilot called uh, Once Upon a Time, which is a new ABC pilot that takes uh, sort of classic fairy tales, classic fairy tales, and sort of incorporates them into uh, so there's two realities: there's the fairy tale character, and there's a counterpart counterpart that's in uh, a contemporary reality. That's uh, and it's actually a wonderful script. Uh, and then the uh, last one was a show called Chaos, uh, which was sort of a, a tongue-in-cheek CIA sort of thing. Um, what else? Uh, I had a mark on Dexter, which was great fun because it's my uh, it's one of my favorite shows. And uh, but 
Uh, but I miss Stargate and I miss uh, the people. I haven't seen Richard. I don't know. God, it's been a while. And uh, uh, so and it's a pleasure to be here and, uh, and to be around you guys. Your enthusiasm and... Uh, <laughs> Like, and now I know frog, it means question. Yeah, me for instance, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, thanks, yeah. Thank you very much. Hi, it's uh, Zach here from Trek Radio again. I have a question for Gareth. Um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. Um, I'm here. Hi there. Um, so a couple of years ago, I think in 2007, you did some work on the uh, independent uh, of Gods and Men, Star Trek of Gods and Men. Uh, you worked with uh, Chase Masterson, Tim Russ, uh, a bunch of people from the original series. Uh, can you tell us what that was like? Um, yeah, we filmed in um, upstate New York uh, at a time of the year where it was incredibly hot. And, um, we filmed in an abandoned garage, is what it was. It was an old car dealership garage. And uh, they, uh, there were some train tracks. There were some train tracks right next door to the garage. So every five minutes a train would come through. And they also decided to film at the same time that they had the Harley Davidson Motorcycle Festival going on. So if it wasn't a train, it was a Harley, da a pack of Harley Davidsons that would be coming through. Uh, so it was an incredibly grueling process filming that. But the uh, final product, I thought, I thought the script was great. I was very excited to work on that. Um, I remember when Tim Russ called me, Tim Russ, who played Tuvok, he directed the project. Um, he asked me, would you, like to, uh, would you like to work on an independent Star Trek film? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> and then he said, you're playing a character completely opposite of Vincent Kim. I said, absolutely, I will join this project. So, yeah, so I had a good time. Thanks. Very good. Uh, where would you see uh, Ensign Kim now, uh, if, if the show was continuing or if you... Uh, had a chance to pro progress the character, where would you want to be now? Would it be Admiral Kim or...? Well, yeah. <laughs> one step at a time there. Okay. Um, Ensign Kim stayed an Ensign for the entire seven years, uh, so just one uh, rank uh, higher would be great. Um, it's funny, I asked somebody in the U.S. Navy, I said, if you're an Ensign, which is the most junior officer, after seven years, what rank are you? They said, oh, you're almost uh, full commander, you're lieutenant commander by that time. Um, so I'm, I, I will be the oldest ensign in, in the history of Starfleet, basically. Oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, just one for Richard as well. Um, how many of your one, you were quite famous in SG-1 for your uh, quippy one-liners and, and just humorous uh, statements and such. How much of that was you and how much of that was the, the, the writers? Well... <laughs> um, it's hard to answer that because uh, I don't know, without going uh, into a back into a, a, a define for you my my acting um, approach to acting. It's uh, oh, go ahead. most well. Read my book. It's, it's all in the book. The writers. No, I, I they they started having to really kind of. Uh, in the early goings, it was basically, you know, I, I warned them that I had s some live wires that just hadn't been crimped properly when I was growing up, so just to be, you know, to be as open as possible to uh, changes on the fly, and that's, during the rehearsal periods, that's pretty much where we would try to iron things out and get them to settle down, because it's just, you know, it's such a, an environment it's like, a, like having a license to misbehave, and that's how I kind of treated it. Not disrespectfully, but I did have to, as one of the executive producers, kind of pull it back and so we could get the job done. Otherwise, we'd still be there. But um, it became a collaborative effort. Thank you. <laughs> he said safely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Whose phone is that? Mm. I have a question for Dave Benedict. Um, oh, no. ah, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry to wake you up, Dick. Um, I can't you don't need to remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, a few minutes, we heard a question about a new reimagination of Battlestar Galactica as a member of the original cast. What do you think? Needs Battlestar Galactica even needs another uh, restart, reboot? Anything? What's your opinion about that? Regurgitation. 
we need, a, we need another regurgitation of Battlestar Galactica. I don't know. I, I, I don't... <clears throat> Does the world need it? No. Uh, I think the people, that, some of the people involved in the show need, need, need to keep this thing going on to the, you know, forever. Until they finally get it right, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about the future. I, really, I, I'm totally ignorant of of everything. I've been living in Ghent for too long. I've been living in Ghent for a long time, so I can I can get my way around Ghent, but I can't. Remember, I don't know what's going on with the Battlestar Galactica world. Um, I'm sorry. I let you down. No, I'm supposed to have inside poop, but Glenn Larson. <laughs> Glenn Larson is a close personal friend, but uh, I haven't spoken to him for ten, with, for ten years. But so. Okay, I think you. he has the movie rights. I think he owns yeah. the movie rights. So yeah. it's up to him. Mm -hmm. Which means uh, it'll probably eventually get done. Him and Tom DeSanto. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> what? Good you. Wer möchte die nächste Frage stellen? Uh, I'm also Lina Petra from Radio M94.5 in Munich, and sorry Brigitte, but this is another question for Rick. Uh, Rick, about one year ago, I think for your birthday, you, you got about 18, 19 postcards from, from your fans all over the world. I know that they still wonder if you had the time to read them all. 18 or 19? 18 or 19, I think. Million. I did? I did? <laughs> yeah, I think so, you should. Um. What do you mean? I got fan mail? No, postcards for, for, uh, for your birthday last year. Be careful eating the candy. Um, no. no. I, I haven't had a chance to read them. No, last year I got postcards. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yes, they were, they were great. Did you have the time to, to read them all? Yeah. No. No, no because uh, on a lot of them, the, the writing is so small, and uh, also in foreign languages. But I'll, I'll get them deciphered soon. <laughs> They're beautiful postcards, though, thank you. They're all from you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sure, no, only one. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, uh, Kevin Kant again. I have a question for Katie Hewlett. Uh, could you tell us something about Once in a Lifetime? No. <laughs> Once in a Lifetime. Yeah, the thing about the... I, I read about it a, a bit about uh, a soldier uh, making wishes for other soldiers or so, did I get that right? Because you, um, um, you do charity for this, perhaps? I don't, I oh. should, I feel horribly guilty now. <laughs> okay, no, sorry. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I gave money to the Humane Society. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what that is. Was that on Twitter? Was that on Twitter? Yes. Oh, on Twitter. yes, yes. I don't know anything about it except I just did what I was told. There was a list of things to do, and and people bid on uh, a tweet, mm -hmm. and but I actually don't know much about the charity. But I know it was. I yeah, that's a horrible answer. No problem. No <laughs> I didn't know that's what it was called. Okay, <laughs> yes. Great. Classy. Classy. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Five minutes left. I have a question for Marina and Will. About bloody time. What, <laughs> 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 sitting there like chopped liver? <laughs> and you, you, you English Star Trek radio person. And what about us? Yes. <laughs> in the flagship, in the flagship show. Questions for Nicole, questions for everybody else on bloody Star Trek. What about us? <laughs> Young man. I, I don't think I know why he didn't ask you any questions. Why? <laughs> why? Why didn't you ask me a question, you? And you're English, aren't you? Are you English? I'm English. Oh, you should be ashamed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. 
nice young man. Very good looking you are too. <laughs> Unlike him. All right. I'm Greek I'm love. Well. Okay, good. That's right. So am I. I'm from the company Gigaset and uh, we've been developing this product we're launching today. And it's basically come from Housewives, but there was a point in our development when we realised it was, you know, so close to TNG, Next Generation, and you both here representing it. You are essentially, for the company, two people from the future who've come in today, and we've been running up from the past with all this information that we get from our customers, saying that we want to touch something on our body and talk. And you're the living proof of 10 years, 173 episodes of TNG. I'm 87. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, <laughs> not including the, the one with LaForge. I, I'm sorry. That's okay. Right. Right. But um, I, I'd really be interested to know, what was it like living for 10 years, at least in the film world, without a phone? That all the communication you did was this. And sometimes it's very complex. You're talking with a, with a computer. You're talking with... Another computer, then someone comes in the room, then someone's running along the corridor, and then it's all happening. And that for us in, in R&D and innovation is a nightmare. Just trying to get two people talking together is... is, is, is as, a, as this is a technical question, and technical. I was never a technical... It sounds technical okay. to me. I'm going to let my friend Will Wheaton answer this one. <laughs> it's really cool to be part of something that helped create the world that we live in today. By in the, <laughs> Star Trek inspired designers and programmers and scientists to reach for a world that was better and more interesting and more convenient than the one that we lived in when we were making the show. Uh, I have a tricorder app on my phone. Um, yes, I do. And, uh, and it's really cool. And it's functional. And it's functional. Scans a number of different uh, bits of information that the that the phone thank you that the phone takes in, and uh, when I break that out and show it off to my friends, they're all sort of bemused that I'm a former Star Trek cast member using a thing inspired by Star Trek, and then impressed that it actually works. Right. <laughs> and uh, when this is the first time uh, my wife and I have been together for 15 years, and this is thank you. And this is the very first time in 15 years of knowing each other that she and I have not been in instant on-demand communication really? because it's so ridiculously expensive for me to have a mobile phone here. Right. Um, and uh, we were joking about it before I left that we're going back to this sort of like Stone Age existence from like 1987. Uh, where we had to actually plan phone calls yeah, and, uh, and, and send letters and things to each other. Yeah. So uh, I'm incredibly proud to be part of something that uh, inspired someone to eventually lead to the company that you work in. Right, thank you. Marina, can I come back to you? What, what yeah. product would you wish from TNG in the future to be real? Um, say holodeck. Say holodeck. <laughs> okay, I toss up between the holodeck and um, the replicators. Okay, what, what, which, where would you really fall, replicator or holodeck? Um, I never really did anything fun on the holodeck. <laughs> did I? I was using it wrong. Okay. Um, I don't even want. I, my mind has immediately gone to porn now. Okay. All right. And so I was right. Okay. Um, you know, I kind of like the replicator thing. Actually, I would like the replicator because that would save me a lot of time in the kitchen. Yeah. As a woman, I would say, you know, a woman who cooks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would like the replicator. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Could I just add something to what you were saying? I'm over here. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, on our show, uh, to joke around with our, our communicator badges, yeah. I would pretend like I would say, um, Kip to Captain Janeway, and then I'd go, and I would Kip to Captain Janeway, I wouldn't hear anything, and then I would imitate her voice, like, hello, this is Captain Janeway, I'm not here right now, please leave your message. Like it was a, you know, an answering machine with the communicator. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, before we finish, I would like to announce Mr. Gerhard Reible for a special announcement. I don't know what he would, will say us, will tell us, we will see. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Marina, as always, younger than ever. Good to hear you. Here. And before, before you leave the building, you know, Elvis leaves the building, and before we get a photo shooting here, I have one special thing in order of FedCon, in order of track marketing for Brigitte, because Brigitte is our um, Hummel, Biene, Sama Eine, 
Huh? Bumblebee. 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 And she worked so hard the whole last six months for the press here for FedCon, and she uh, she do this now for how many years? Three years? Four years? Five years? Six years, and it works. Yeah, it works. And therefore, I have a small, uh, small presentation for you. Aww. Thanks. Thank you. so much. I'm speechless. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, back to work. <laughs> Before we finish, you have the last chance for pictures, I hope, in the group. Could you please go a little bit closer in the middle for some group photos? Thank you so much. I know you're Could you look to your left, all of you? On my hair. Greek blood. So my name is Zach. Zach, lovely to meet you. Lovely to I've actually been trying to contact your agent to interview you. I've not been getting anything back though. Which agent? I don't know the name off the top of my head. If you have time while you're here though, I'll just Let's find five minutes, yeah. We'll find five minutes. Shall I speak to Bridget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I mean, probably, like, either before or after the autograph sessions or something. I'm not going to have a lot of time because I've got my brothers coming from Greece. Are your brother's Greek or he just lives there? He lives there. Well, we're Greek. I mean, we're Greek. I'm Greek as well. Nicodemus. My surname, Nicodemus. I don't speak Greek. Like, you're shame. I grew up around Greece in Harringay. In fact, I speak Greek with a separate accent. Yes. I've heard, I think I've heard you speak on uh, some videos. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so we'll find time, especially as you agree. Uh, okay, I'll we'll speak to you. Your, 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 your agent told me you don't have time, but I don't have time. What general rule you I think the secret is that um, we, uh, Gene Roddenberry invented something magical that was full of hope and, and optimism, and I think that connected with If not, maybe a telephone interview sometime? I just, 
you know, you, we told good stories. Yeah, I, and, and we had good months, characters. Like six and months. Six months. Because I'm going right back to Vancouver for work as soon as I can. The public and so okay. they, it's like so when you I, have, you know, like, it's like the Beatles, the you know. I, yeah, I you grew up try. with the Beatles. Okay. I still I love the Beatles, right? Even though two of them have died. It's the same kind of thing. Okay. You see all these people outside. The costumes. Can you believe representatives? I know. I think it's the best thing that ever happened in my life. Would you mean to be involved with Star Trek? Could you say hi? It just makes me really happy that the fans are so loyal and they still love us all these years later. Go ahead. Very much. Hi, I'm Will Wheat. You're listening to Trek Radio. I'm taking this with me. I want to talk to you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay. Shush, shush, shush. Thank you. 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 Thank you.